What's cracking in the deep, everybody? It's your boy, King Leviathan, and we're back with another episode of How to Wine Your Mind Redux. And in the last episode, we just did a little bit of sightseeing, and we picked up a new case, and today we're going to pick up that case officially, which is the Scramble Pentagram. Client in an occult research club, Place Shibuya, the legend of Shibuya Hirosaka. I need help verifying it. I was in the end for the reward. So you're the president of the Anodin Occult Research Club, correct? Yes, yeah, so and my name is May Kokosho. Alright, what have you got for us today? Well, I was wondering if you could help run an experiment to test an urban legend and see whether it's true or not. Oh ho, I like the sound of that. It's not like something we get around here every day. Anyway, what legend do you have in mind? Well, it's called Shibuya Hirasaka, and it goes like this. At the Shibuya Scramble intersection, there are five hills, each of them going in a separate direction. You split five different people up, one on each road alongside those hills. Then, you have them all head toward the Scramble intersection as they sing the Hirasaka song. If everyone makes it to the center of the Scramble intersection at the same time, right as they finish singing... What? Do their wishes come true or something? No, a dead person is brought back to life. Huh? Huh, can't say I've heard that one before. Reminds me of some old Shinto stories. I can see what makes the legend so appealing, though. You have to make it to the center through that constant crowd all while singing. Pulling it off sounds like no mean feat. Indeed, we've tried at the club several times, but we always either bump into people or get held up by a traffic light. But we've heard rumors about your organization, so I thought I'd see if you could help us somehow. Rumors? Like what? Oh, like how there's a uh, detective agency in Nakano dealing in the occult that has uh, supernatural ties to another world. How, how did you find that information out? And if you go to it at 2.22 a.m., there's a door to that other world that shows up. Stuff like that. Huh. Geez, I know we work in the shadows here and all, but to think we're so infamous as to be having people make up urban legends about us. Wow. D don't take it the wrong way, but still, if we could prove that legend is true, it'd be... <laughs> it'd be a real boon for my club. What do you think? I know your main work here is hunting down ghosts and spirits, but will you do it for us? Wait, what? Hunting down ghosts and... Where do people even come up with this stuff? Now you've really got me curious. Well, my assistant doesn't know a thing about it. Yeah, I don't know where I heard it either. <laughs> Silly me. Don't worry about it. We'll take up your case. We need a little time to get ready. So could you wait for us elsewhere here in the building? Oh, thank you so much. I have other members coming too, so I'll just wait outside for them. Looks like we've got another weird case on our hands. But a case is a case. What are you going to do? I'm going to start preparing for our Shibuya Hira Hirosaka experiment. Why don't you go talk to the other club members and learn more about the legend? Have you ever heard the lyrics to the Hirosaka song? It goes like this. To hear of it a curse, to see it even worse, the depths of Shibuya, it's where we all must cross. When you feel alone, down you must go. When you feel low, down you must go. At the bottom lies a secret, hidden world, but woe to thee who finds the entrance there. For if you make it, you only meet despair. You only meet despair. You have to sing that while heading towards the center of the Shibuya Scramble intersection for the legend of Shibuya Hirosaka to work. Where are the other members at? Shibuya is filled to the brim with hills no matter where you look. There's Konosaka, Masaka, Organzaka. Really, you could say that Shibuya is like the valley for all of Tokyo, and I just don't, I don't just mean geographically either. There's just so much information and energy that flows into it from all sides. May thinks that's why Shibuya is so popular to begin with. Ah. There are five specific hills you have to use for Shibuya, Hirosaka, Do Dogenzaka, Bunkamaru Dori, Koen Dori, Miyamasu Zaka, and Meiji Dori. If you look at them on a map, they even form a pentagram. Wait, what do you mean you don't see that?
Hmm? Why am I wearing this maid outfit? Because I have to get back to work once we're done here. I came here because May really needed a, enough people to help out, but I can't say I'm otherwise sh super eager about the whole thing. I mean, there was an actual girl who died doing this, you know. Apparently she was everything you do... Wait, she was doing everything you do for Shibuya Hirosaka and got hit by a truck right when she started crossing the street. I just want to hurry up and get this over with so I can leave already. Shibuya, the scramble intersection, a truck, and an accident. But woe to thee who finds the entrance there. Or if you make it. Spooky. Alright, I got everything all set up. Get all of the club members together and take them over to Shibuya. I'll be giving commands from here. Meanwhile, I want you to join in and help perform Shibuya Kurosaka as one of the five people. Can everyone hear me? We're now going to commence verifying the legend of Shibuya Hirosaka. I've hacked into the cameras at the scramble intersection. I'll be watching you all from here and giving you commands as necessary. Keep your eyes and ears peeled and be ready for anything. Now, let's get started. To hear of it a curse, to see it even worse. The depths of Shibuya, it's where we all must cross. You're doing great, keep up that pace. Lily, I need you to speed up a little more. When you feel alone, down you must go. When you feel low, down you must go. Good, good. You're all about to reach the scramble crossing. The traffic lights should cooperate, too. That being said, just in case, I went in and rigged it to work in our favor, too. So just go ahead and cross. At the bottom lies a secret hidden world, but woe to thee who finds the entrance there. For if you make it, you only meet despair. You only meet despair. Well, how'd it go? We, we did it. We all made it here at the same time. Yeah, I guess we did, huh? Yep, without a doubt. What the? There's nobody here. Where did everyone go? You're right. There aren't any cars around either. Looks like we've lost contact, too. Wait, what's, what's that? Spooky. Hello. Why doesn't anyone pay attention to me? Or maybe they actually do notice me. Now she's over here. I can't live here anymore. It's like, like a purgatory. So I'll. Uh oh. Whoa, who are you? How long have you been here? I'll die and remain here. Here at the bottom of Shibuya, in the other world. She, she vanished? Ah! What's going on? What's going on here? Where did you come from? <laughs> what what am I seeing? Hey! What's going on? Come in. Leviatha! Look out! Ah! That was that was a close one. If we didn't hear your voice just now, that truck would have... Are you alright? What happened? Fill me in. What was all that? And now everything's going back to normal. What, what's happening here? <sighs> what a day. We owe Detective Matayoshi a lot for helping out again. Not only did he restore calm, but he also took the truck driver in for questioning. Apparently, that driver didn't see any of you until right before you were all nearly hit. But here's where it gets strange. The crowd in the intersection saw you all the whole time, but nobody responded to their warnings. It's like you guys couldn't see or hear anything that was going on around you. Actually, yeah, that's how it was. We didn't know there were still other people around until your assistant spoke up. 
And would this girl happen to be that high school student you saw there? It is. That's her. Y yeah, definitely. She's the one for sure. I see. Well, that settles it. What do you mean? Who is she? She was a high school girl who was killed three months ago in an accident at the Scrambled Crossing intersection. She died in an accident? For real? Yep, she was even hit by a truck. But that doesn't make any sense. We saw her with her own eyes, right in front of us. She came back to life. Huh? Don't you remember? That's how the legend of Shibuya Hirosaka goes. Hmm. So what you five saw back there was the dead brought back to life then. I don't even... I did a little research. Shibuya today is a valley that was cut off from Shibuya River, which itself now runs under the Scramble intersection. Rivers are a common border in myths and religions between this world and the next. There's the Sanzu River in Japan, the River Styx in Greece. I'd say you guys got caught up in one such place today. There are a lot of names you can call it, but the end result remains the same. Anyway, this case is closed. We set out to prove Shibuya Hirosaka is real, and we did. Really? You're just going to... Leave that girl alone? Is that what you want to ask? Hmm, you may be confused about our role. Don't forget, we're not ghost hunters, and we're not exorcists. That's not what we do. We're cyber sleuths. No more and no less. I would appreciate it if you remember that from now on. Stay safe on your way home. Don't get into any accidents for real now. Whew. Well, that case is over and done with for now, although I know you didn't get a chance to really use your powers, but I figure if you had used them in front of those kids, that would have just spawned another urban legend. <laughs> eh, yeah. If I kill everyone, that'll make me lucky. And if everyone dies, that'll make me happy. What just happened? That's... That just happened. Somebody die? Great to see you pulled through with that case. Keep up the good work for going forward. I don't feel good after that. I mean, I'll take the money, but... Damn. Alright, so... I have regular stuff to do. I don't like to eat it much. I've heard the view from the entrance is oppressive, though. Go see it and tell me what you think. So we should go to the Eden entrance. Usually she just tells me to go find something to do. You. Hmm? There's an anonymous post on my digiline. Huh? Stop looking at me. Huh? No reply. Yo, we got another case from the Occult Club. This one looks personal, though. I think those guys might have taken a uh, liking to us, given that we deal in the strange and unusual in our line of work. And in doing so, they're inviting yet more strange and unusual things into our lives. Starting with themselves, really. <laughs> oh. Because I was supposed to talk to you first? But, Mom, I swear, there's something there. I just felt it. Sweetie, look behind you and check for yourself. See? Nothing there. Now, don't worry about it. So I'm assuming that means I need to go back. What the fuck is the... Oh. Is there anything I have to go to this shop? That's helpful. Costly, but helpful. If I didn't have a searcher, I could think of searcher. Which is what I'm using to get those cases. Do we have a new case? We do! 
Nightmare Eater. Difficulty level 2. Client Occult Research Club's Mon Monaka. Monaka? Monaka? I don't know. I'm going to read it as Monaka. Sounds like Monica, like we would say in the U.S. But My digiline is weird. It keeps transmitting without me doing anything. Please find the cause. Oh, a memory up for the reward. Hell yeah. Fuck the money. Hey, nice to see you again, Monica. What brings you here by yourself? Uh, well, I think I might be caught up in a cybercrime. Cybercrime? Did you go to the police? I can't really. There are some supernatural elements involved, I think. I understand. You made the right choice coming to us. Alright, give us the details. Okay, take a look at this. It's my log on my digiline. Alright, let's see what you've got. <sighs> Should I go to my club tomorrow? They claim they do research, but all they really do is hang out and talk. It's only a club because everyone has similar interests. I should probably enroll in something a little more serious and go to that, too. And I could really use a hot, manly boyfriend, too. Oh my gosh, did I just write that? Huh, what's so special about this? Keep going, you'll understand why. Could Kenji have a crush on May? Lol, no way. She has a one-track mind. She can't think of anything else but occult stuff. Does that guy even have his eyes on straight? He's such an ass. He has a real hottie right in front of him and can't take his eyes off May for even a second to notice it. Maybe I should seduce him. <laughs> I mean, I got the goods. I give him a peek anytime. Hmm, how do I put this? Your posts aren't pulling any punches here. Putting my personal opinion aside, I otherwise don't see anything wrong with them. They look normal to me. Ugh, the thing is, I didn't write that stuff. What? They just randomly showed up, but they freaked me out so badly that I deleted them. Uh, I hear you. Then doesn't that mean your account was probably just hacked? Some 2-bit hacker probably did did it to screw with you, or maybe your computer was infected with... No, and it isn't anything like that. Hmm, but I take it that this is where that supernatural part you mentioned factors into these posts? Yeah. I wasn't the one who wrote those posts and put them online, but they are how I feel. What you see written there, that's stuff that I think about but don't express out loud. Okay, I get you. It's stuff that's hard to share with any of the other club members, basically. R right. Hmm, seeing as you're in an occult club, I'm sure you know about Ouija boards and whatnot, right? Your hands move against your will, sending you messages from the spirit world. Something like that could very possibly be happening to you. Look at the post times in your log. Those messages went out in the dead of night. You should have been long sound asleep. You should have long been sound asleep by that point. Okay, then what? In the late 1800s, there was an academic by the name of Enrio Inoue who posited these sorts of things can come from having multiple selves. Enrio Inoue? You mean the man who came up with mystery studies, right? I've shown off his work at the club bef Hold on, are you saying I have a split personality? The politically correct term for that would be dissociative identity disorder, actually. I guess, I guess it makes sense. If I'm writing these posts at night without realizing it, that would explain it, but, but, hmm. M maybe it really is that I've honestly been worried that it might be deep down. But no, that's not it. Huh? This isn't because of some mental issue. Here, take a look at this. Just try and find me. This was just now posted on your account. It's a reply to what I wrote on your digiline. To the culprit, I am a detective who's taken up Monica's case. Know that we will track you down and uncover your identity, no matter who or where, where you are. You can't hide forever. You've been warned. Well, this conversation, or this conversion unfolded online as you and I were talking, while you weren't touching any terminals. That means you're not the one behind those posts, let alone any mental disorder of yours. The real culprit is out there somewhere. Whoever is behind it is just a dumb troll, albeit an arrogant one at that. To quote Enrio Inoue's work again, what we've got is a case of a fake wonder, or trying, or someone trying to make this look more mythic, or someone trying to make this more mystical than it really is. In other words, this is plain old hacking. You said that the contents of these posts are based on actual facts about yourself, yes? Well, I don't know about facts so much as just how I think and feel, really. Were you logged into Eden before you fell asleep? 
It, yes, he do that every night. Gotcha. Then the way I see it, I bet the culprit's been snooping around and hacked into your memory in Eden. You could do that sort of thing in Eden? Well, not literally. At least, not when you're alone wolfing it like your hacker here. Still, avatars in Eden are essentially digitized version of people's mental data, so to speak, and so memory data hacks theoretically doable. Things take a bit of a different turn once the so-called supernatural enters the equation. Huh? Don't sweat it. For now, just log into Eden tonight like you normally would. I'll have my assistant waiting for you in the lobby. Alright, but what do you actually plan on doing? Oh, let's just say we're going fox hunting, and our decoy will be... Our little maiden's deep dark secrets. <laughs> Looks like Monica's still not here yet. Here's hoping this isn't a sign of what's to come. Huh? Hmm? Oh, I had Monica lay down our decoy. If the culprit's the type of person I suspect they are, they'll definitely go for it. That means it's a pretty safe guess to say that we're going to log into Eden tonight. Once they're in position, it's just a matter of apprehending them. But that shouldn't be a problem either. That's because Pete's going to be working with us. Oh, hell yeah! How's it going? Long time no see. Thanks again for what you did back there with the AC stuff. I had Pete here take a look at those posts the hacker wrote so he could learn their scent. Yep, turns out those messages had traces of a Digimon on them. Can't fool me. I'll let you know when the bad guy is close by. You can count on me and my nose. But of course, that's why I brought you on board. This is so cool working with a real life detective. I feel like a real boy wonder here. Huh? Huh? You don't know who the boy wonder is? Really? Hey, I'm here. Sorry to keep you waiting. I did just, like you asked, and posted the message on my Digiline, but... Am I really going to be okay doing that? Huh? Oh. Huh. <laughs> You're curious what she wrote, aren't you? It's fine, I'll tell you. She confessed her love to the hacker and also mentioned that she really wanted to meet him. Huh? Why would you do that? It's a real blatant ploy on our part, but again, this guy thinks his hacking skills are hot stuff. He's going to want to verify Monica's claims, preferably by checking her memories directly. Hacking memory data takes some work, though, even to just take a look inside it. It'll require actually directly reaching out and making contact with her avatar. That's the only way he could have done this. He had to have been touching her somehow in order to do the hacks. What's more, messing around with someone's mental data would take going into the core of Eden itself. The security there is supposed to be tight as can be. It would take a real effort to break in. The hacker behind Monica's messages would have therefore had, be, had to be touching her for at least several minutes before leaving his handiwork. I smell him! He's close by! Good, it's time to go hunting. Go investigate the surrounding area and get this person out of his foxhole. Is he in the corner? Yep. There, right in front of you. Hurry up and do a scan. Yes, we've got you now, Buster. You're not going anywhere. Ugh, for real? How'd you find me? I knew it. The culprit's a little kid. Don't call me a little kid. That's rude. Hey, wait a minute. You're the one who spotted me here before, aren't you? Crap, how'd you notice me? You're not supposed to be able to see me at all. Oh, so that's what's happened, huh? <laughs> My little assistant is so sensitive to digital waves and special networks. The culprit didn't stand a chance of hiding forever. We're a cyber sleuth. It comes with the job. But enough of that. We've got questions for you. Does that make you a detective too? Whoa, you're so hot. Yeah, whatever, just answer my questions already. Who are you and how did you achieve such a complicated... I'm what you'd call a genius architect. I'm not some lowly hacker or programmer. Do you know about the Baka Reborn service? It's a special service here on Eden. In cases like where you, a user either permanently leaves Eden or they die, the Baka Reborn service gathers all the user's data and deletes it. And I'm the one who runs it. Huh? You don't have to act so surprised. Kids are just more attuned to the digital world than adults. I just studied on my own and joined groups that I could trade info with, and soon enough, I started working in corporate R&D. Oh, but the reason I'm considered a genius isn't just because I run that service. I'm also the one who designed it. Actually, what I said about Baku gathering and deleting abandoned user data isn't entirely accurate. It actually does more. 
Not only does it gather and accumulate data pertaining to a given account, it also organizes it, almost like it had a mind of its own. To be honest, even I'm surprised by that. I never expected it to act so precisely and deliberately. It's a real case of the creation surpassing the creator, but that's how it should be with these sorts of things, no? I follow you, Baku Reborn Service. Tell me, does the name Baku refer to the mythological creature that consumes nightmares? Yep, you've got it. I named it that because data we don't want to show online is very much its own sort of nightmare. And by using that Baku on yourself, you could... Alright, I might know what you did now. Hmm? You handed your avatar's surface level appearance over to your Baku and let it consume it. That way, nobody around you would be able to know what, that you were lurking. But you didn't let it purge that data outright. You controlled it yourself, making it hand it back like a dog returning prey to a hunter. Wow, you figured it all out. Yep, you got me. That's amazing, though. I love it when I actually meet a smart adult. Hmm. I'm guessing you basically used that same trick to draw out Monica's mental data, then. Yeah, I copied it, but I only did that with her short-term memory. The stuff you'd find around a person's hippocampus inside a real brain. Even something as advanced as Baku can't break into a person's memory with an active mental data. That would definitely be crossing the line, and I understand why that's bad. I'll hand over what I copied to your partner, given the apparent interest it sparked. It really is like a Baku, isn't it? I think more or less I have a grasp with the current situation now. I am that I am not. I think that might be the best way to describe what your partner is to this world, if you catch my drift. <laughs> you know I was thinking the same thing. Genius and uh, even I can't purposely go out and architect life itself. That thing was probably born as such by pure chance. I have no idea how it'll end up growing moving forward. Certainly at the very least, I have a feeling I'll lose control of it eventually. You really are smart. I just don't just mean you know a lot either. There's a sharpness to your words that I admire. Can I trust you to let me deal with the Baku? Do you plan on disposing of it? We'll see. Depend on, it depends on how things go. Okay, I trust your judgment. You'll find it uploaded onto a site. The password lock for it is lifted. The rest, I'll leave up to you. Whoa, this little kid? He's the culprit? I'd never have guessed it would be someone so young. What? I, uh, well, you see... Huh? Why did I do what I did with her account? Well, who, who cares at this stage? I won't do it again and I promise to even apologize for it later. I'll even give her some constellation money, so just leave me alone. You know, I just remembered. We've never met here at Eden before, haven't we? Or we've met... Anyways. We talked for a little bit while I was waiting to meet up with a friend. Right? So why did you do all that mean stuff? You're so smart, you shouldn't be out committing crimes. Eh, um... Yeah? Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. That's what I was hoping to hear. See, you're a good kid at heart. Hmm? What are you staring at? I did it, alright? I apologize. Let's call it good at that, shall we? You still have work to do. I'm sending you the URL of the Baka Reborn service now. We're going to resume our hunt now. Only our goal here is to capture rather than kill our target. Monica, I want you to go back. It's too dangerous for you to stick around. My assistant will take care of everything from here. Alright, I'm counting on you. We don't know how our prey is going to react once we get there, so you better be prepared for anything before we go. I'm just gonna go. I have no reason to hold back. I trust my team. I am gonna save them. Whoa! What? I didn't realize it would put me in a whole different space. Well, let's just see how the uh, difficulty level is with the Digimon in here. Excuse you? I can't use level 3. There are 4 or more Digimon which are changing their better. Well, I can just grab a 4th Digimon. Interesting. 
They aren't that tough. Let's get through this wall. I do want to get that because I don't know if I'll be able to get it later. Oh, wow. Tyranimon? I probably did anything. That did better. And goodbye. Yeah, not that much damage. I can just attack you and you'll fall. Goodbye. Sick. Oh, shit. Alright, so let's go to the Digimon. If I can Digivolve into a Gardramon, that would help the situation, I think. Damn it. Fifty-one! Oops. The Ouija probably has the better chance, but it's still only fifty-one defense. Damn it. Oh, whoops. I'm gonna swap... Bowser out for Let's go Huey. Should be able to crack that wall. Yeah. Then I'll put my back, uh, my team back to normal because I want them to get the XP. Oh, an emerald. That was worth it. Pushovers. There he is. Bakman? There it is, our one and only Baku. From the look of it, that kid's program has merged with the wild Digimon. Uh-oh. That's not good. As Sonya is trying to reason here, the programs erased whatever traces were left of that Digimon's own sentience. Digimon are easily susceptible to influence from man-made programs. That's one of the reasons why some don't consider them to be autonomous beings with their own sense of will. There's no getting around this one. You're just going to have to knock some sense into it. Time to... Focus! It's actually kind of fast. Oh, is that light? I don't want the sonic voice. Oh, this... This will be easy. I'm not concerned. <laughs> Get out of here.
Okay, now that that's over, download the data and collect what's left of Baku. Once you are done, get out of there and come back to the office. It's hard to believe such a little kid would do a heinous crime like that. I'm still shocked. Heinous, huh? I guess I see where you're coming from. Even if he didn't mean any harm by it, what he did certainly broke the law. But that's all in the past now that we've exercised your account of that little stalker that haunted it. This case is closed now. We'll be holding on to the Baku program in the meantime. If we can tune it up a bit, it could very well come in handy. But I still don't get it. Why did he go after me in the first place? Hmm. <sighs> Do any of you realize... Do neither of you get... Do neither of you really get why that boy picked on her? In a way, there really was no reason at all. Except to say that it was love at first sight. He really liked you, Monica. Huh? At first, he probably just wanted to get to know you more with all his heart, but as we saw, he was less mature than he'd like to admit. He wanted to tease and mess with you so you'd pay attention to him. At his age, it's a pretty standard mentality towards someone you like, really. Whew, that was so fun. Let me help out again if something else comes up, okay? I think it'd be pretty cool to be a detective cat Digimon like that. You definitely helped us back there, so you have my thanks, Pete. Anyway, are you still not able to actually leave the confines of Dr. Broadway's intranet? Yeah, I think it has to do with how old the network protocols for the inter intranet are. It makes it hard to transfer data around. It could be I'm just stuck to the vacuum tube computer like how Baku was to that Digimon. Hmm, there's so much to learn about what Pete truly is, it seems. Hmm? Huh? Why do we call Pete Pete? Well, he's a cat. He was extracted from his own little time capsule where he was frozen to sleep all that time. Besides, open enough doors and you're bound to... Do you really need a reason for it? Unlike the digital world, the real world is filled to the brim with things that have no real reason for being what they are. It's a simple pleasure in life that we're entitled to have as humans. Don't sweat it too much, just kick back and enjoy it. I don't get that reference. Nice. Give me my memory up. Yes. Pete's an important member of the team, so make sure you two get along, alright? Of course I'd get along, Pete. Come to think of it, we're out of beans. Pick up some more, would you? I used them all up crafting a new recipe yesterday. I don't wanna... I don't wanna give you more death fuel. Alright. I'm gonna use this memory up. Hell yeah, 45. I'm gonna check on our boys. Oops. Well, I guess we're gonna still work. 52. 52. 53. I think that Luigi is gonna be the only one to be able to digivolve, but not any time soon so uh that's gonna do it for this episode hopefully we'll be able to digivolve into a gardramon next time so thank you everybody for watching and i'll catch y'all in the next one see ya